At the start of the part two, we get a flashback to the events that led to Judith's murder. It turns out that she never left the island as we were previously made to believe but was instead kidnapped by Orson. And the cult's executioner, Brenda. Judith falls to her knees and begs for mercy, but her pleas fall on deaf ears as Brenda swiftly pierces her skull with a metal device. Back in the present, Zoa is devastated by Judith's death and spends days in bed, mourning her friend. However, that evening, a dangerous storm develops, prompting Zoa, alongside all the inhabitants, to spend the night together in the island's central module. Fortunately, most of the islanders make it to the module before the storm arrives. However, Charlie isn't quite as lucky as he gets into a ghastly accident. When a lightning bolt hits a nearby pole, the impact of the charge throws him backward, causing him to fracture his ribs. An injured Charlie is immediately rushed to the island's clinic and is swiftly treated by a doctor. Luckily, he doesn't sustain any fatal injuries, but is still admitted to the clinic. Meanwhile, back at the central module, Zoa meets and befriends one of the locals named Bell. The duo converses about the island and its operations, which ultimately leads to Bell disclosing one of the secret cult terms called Link. She explains that each of the new invitees is assigned a specific local, also known as a Link, to entrap them into the cult. Bell reveals that Zoa's Link is Nico and warns her to stay far away from him. The revelation greatly baffles Zoa and makes her even more distrustful of the locals. Feeling betrayed, she confronts Nico and accuses him of manipulating her. A stunned Nico instantly realizes that a local had disclosed the island's secret, but denies her claims, nonetheless. Seconds later, Nico heads out of the module and visits Astrid to inform her of his recent findings. As they converse, we discover that the island's higher-ups orchestrated Judith's death and planned for Zoa to see her corpse, all in a bid to scare her into submission. However, Nico reveals that their plan had backfired, as Zoa's discovery of Judith's death has only made her more stubborn and vengeful. Hearing this, Astrid decides that Zoa is too much of a rebel and resolves to dispose of her. She orders the island's head guard, Ulises, to bring Zoa to their loft, and minutes later, he arrives with her. Astrid instantly orders Brenda to murder her. However, before the executioner can pull the trigger on her murder device, Zoa pleads for forgiveness and swears to stay on the island forever. Astrid is pleased by her character change and decides to give her a second chance as she orders Brenda to stand down. Zoa is relieved by this and eventually returns to the central module. There, she swiftly realizes that Nico snitched on her to Astrid. This makes her furious and causes them to get into a heated argument. That night, a livid Zoa waits for everyone to fall asleep and tries to kill Nico with a screwdriver in the dead of night. However, before she can finish the job, her roommate, Claudia, appears and stops her. At the opposite end of the island, Meka, the cult's head inspector, pays Charlie a visit in the hospital. The duo instantly hits things off, prompting Meka to invite him to her apartment. Charlie enthusiastically accepts her invitation, and the couple spends a steamy night together in the loft, causing them to catch feelings for each other. The following day, Zoa and Claudia return to their rooms and have a heartfelt conversation. Claudia reveals that her long-term boyfriend tried to escape, but was caught and murdered by the island's higher-ups. Despite this, she remains hell-bent on leaving the island, and fills Zoa in on her plan. Apparently, a new batch of newbies is brought to the island every couple weeks on a boat. Once the new invitees are dropped, the boat returns to the mainland. Hence, Claudia intends to get on the boat without drawing suspicion to complete her getaway. Zoa is impressed by the well-thought plan and considers joining in. Later that day, Zoa meets up with Charlie and Iben and reveals all the island's secrets to them. The two men are devastated on hearing the news and swiftly resolve to leave the island as soon as possible. Hearing this, Zoa tells them about Claudia's plan, and the trio agrees to join her in the escape. The next day, Astrid and her husband, Eric, organize a beach party to celebrate their wedding anniversary. As the party progresses, Eric calls Astrid on stage and offers a heartfelt speech of his undying love for her. Sadly, his touching declaration is cut short when an unknown party hacks into the island's system and uploads an eerie death threat targeted at Astrid. In light of this, the party is instantly called off, and the island's committee is summoned to discuss the issue. Meka, who is in charge of tech handling, explains that the hacker is quite skilled and cannot be tracked. Astrid is livid to hear this but resolves to punish one of the inhabitants to send a clear message to the hacker. She consults the committee for candidate nominations, and several names are brought up the most prominent of which is Zoa. The committee debates sacrificing her but ultimately decides against it. Eventually, Claudia's name is brought up. As the board suspects she has grown vengeful due to her lover's death, the higher-ups further debate this and, shortly after, settles on killing her. The following day, Orson and Brenda arrive at Zoa's apartment 
and arrest Claudia. Zoa senses that something is amiss and tries to defend Claudia. However, the deadly duo quickly silences her and takes Claudia with them while the other cult members watch helplessly. Together, the trio heads to an isolated part of the island. There, Brenda whips out her execution device and, in usual fashion, uses it to pierce Claudia's skull, thus instantly killing her. Meanwhile, back in the city, efforts to find the missing newbies have intensified. Ibn's father hires a private investigator to find his son after getting a series of cryptic messages from an imposter claiming to be Ibn. The investigator immediately begins her job and draws up a list of people who went missing around the same time as Ibn. On this list, she finds Zoa and decides to contact her family. On the other end of the city, Zoa's sister, Gabi, finally visits David and learns more about her sister's dealings and the trip that led to her disappearance. David goes into detail, extensively narrating how the event went, and even shows Gabi the wristbands they were given at the party. The curious Gabi touches the wristband and, unknown to the duo, activates a signal that alerts the island's officials. Eventually, a grateful Gabi thanks David for his help and finally returns home. That night, David gets ambushed and kidnapped by the island's external officials. He is taken to a warehouse and is questioned about the wristband's signal. Daniel is initially quiet and refuses to answer their questions. However, when the agents threaten to kill his mother, he finally succumbs to their demands and comes clean. He tells them all about Gabi and her quest to find her sister. The agents are satisfied by his answers, but kill him, regardless. In the following scene, Africa, Ibn, Charlie, and Zoa undergo a painful initiation ritual. The four invitees take turns walking through a pathway of hot coals on their bare feet. At the end of the path, they each grab a pendant that validates their initiation to the cult. The ritual is highly gruesome and leaves them badly injured. Luckily, they complete the exercise and are each given a star tattoo, thus depicting that they've finally become a part of the cult. Right then, we discover that the island has a hierarchy system represented by the number of star tattoos each local has. A two-star depiction secures a spot on the committee, while a three-star tattoo is reserved for the cult leaders. During the initiation ceremony, Ulises is given a three-star tattoo and joins Astrid and Eric as the highest-ranked members of the community. Days later, the new inductees adapt to their life on the island as Zoa gets increasingly close to Belle. One afternoon, Belle confesses to Zoa that she is the leader of a rising rebel team who plans to overthrow the cult leaders. Belle asks Zoa to join her cause, but the newbie politely refuses and fills the rebel leader in on her plans to escape. Belle has a bad feeling about Zoa's escape plan, but supports her decision and commends her courage. That night, a masked man breaks into Astrid and Eric's residence with a stolen keycard and attacks the couple in their sleep. He covers Astrid's mouth and tries to stab her with a knife, but her shrieks alert Eric who stops the burglar's attack. A fight quickly ensues as the masked man swings his knife in an attempt to kill Eric. The burglar gets the upper hand and manages to pin Eric to the floor. However, before he can deal a finishing blow, Astrid appears and pounces on him. This doesn't do much, though, as the burglar quickly overpowers her and buries a knife in Eric's gut before swiftly making a run for it. A horrified Astrid rushes to Eric's aid and decides to rush him to a hospital. However, they decide against using the island's central clinic as news of the attack would destabilize the community. Hence, they rush to a remote part of the island where a young boy named Isaac lives and asks for his help. Isaac swiftly takes Eric in and attends to his wounds. The young boy skillfully sews him up like a pro and nurses him to health. In the following scene, Astrid calls the committee for a meeting but doesn't mention the incident that happened the night before. Instead, she informs them that a fresh batch of invitees would be arriving on the island for the next recruitment process. Each committee member is delegated to head a unique department to ensure the smooth running of the process. After the meeting, the delegates disperse and relay the information to the other locals. On hearing the news, Charlie and Zoa quickly realize that their long-awaited escape opportunity has finally arrived. The duo instantly begins making plans for their escape. However, their hope is short-lived as Ulises assigns them to work at the party. Learning this, they realize that they'd be under surveillance the entire night and wouldn't have an opportunity to escape. The news greatly angers Zoa prompting her to steal an automobile and drive to the island's shores. There, she meets Belle and explains her plight to her. Empathetic, Belle offers to create a distraction at the party to aid her escape. Zoa is ecstatic to hear this and plays with Belle on the sand as the couple shares a kiss and has a steamy makeout session. The day of the recruitment process finally arrives and arrangements are put in place. The party soon begins as Zoa and Charlie serve as ushers under close supervision by the higher ups. For hours, the duo patiently attends to their roles while they wait for an opportunity to escape. 
Luckily, Belle comes through with her promise and creates a distraction with the help of her fellow rebels. The group messes with the party's wires, causing a series of electrical sparks which scares the attendees. This creates panic among the invitees prompting them to race in different directions. Charlie skillfully blends with the crowd and swiftly races to the island shores. There, he finds an oxygen tank and uses it to dive into the water as he swims to the boat. Once aboard, he discovers that the island's surveillance drone has spotted him. Charlie is initially scared but quickly realizes that its controller is Maka. Maka realizes Charlie is trying to escape and becomes torn over snitching on him or maintaining her loyalty to the island. Due to their shared history, she eventually lets Charlie escape and turns the drone away from the boat. Back on the island, Zoa also blends with the crowd and leaves the party. However, she arrives at the shores pretty late and gets caught by Ulises. The cult leader attacks and tries to choke her, but luckily, Iben appears in time and saves her. The two men get into a fight as they wrestle in the ocean's water. After a lengthy brawl, Iben pins Ulises to the ground and successfully drowns him in the water. An assertive Zoa seizes the opportunity and jumps into the water as she swims towards the boat. However, halfway there, she spots a familiar figure on it that stops her in her tracks. On close inspection, she realizes that the familiar figure is actually her sister, Gabi. Before she can react, Gabi is led to a speedboat by one of the officials and driven with the other invitees to the beach party. Seeing this, Zoa halts her escape plan and remains suspended in the water as she ponders her next move. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.